what's going on guys and welcome to your second part of CSS properties and your 22nd HTML and CSS tutorial so let's continue with our properties of CSS we have been learning from the previous tutorial and let's close this so in the last tutorial we looked at some important CSS properties and in this tutorial let, let's look at some more so now let's create a div with let's say text wo and in the CSS let's give it a width and by width okay so never mind let's give it a background right now I'll teach you about width in a minute let's give it a background width and let's reload this now you see that div by default would span the whole site and would take the height of the font of text so if I make like font size 30 pixels then I'm giving it a 30 pixel height so what if you want a limited width and height of the div without increasing the font size so to achieve that we have the properties named width and height so now let's work with width and height let's, uh, let's give width 100 pixel <coughs> and height as 100 pixel as well now what happens is instead of spanning whole side this will now span only 100 pixel area and 100 pixel height and let's uh, remove the font which we have already done let's reload this and what the heck uh, okay so I removed the background as well so it's not visible let's give the background as red and let's reload this and so we have got a nice little square on the screen now let's say I want to place this text in the very center so it kinda looks like awkward in the top right top left corner actually and to do that we can make use of the text align property which we learned about in the next uh, previous tutorial and let's reload this have you got a problem right here that though it is uh, aligned center horizontally but it is not aligned center vertically so to do that we have the rescuer as line height now line height property would create uh, a basically okay so this is a kind of advanced thing I'm gonna tell you so by default this text would occupy the height the text I'm talking about the text not the div remember that so this text would occupy the height of its font so what you do is with the line height we actually change the height of the line or height of this text without actually modifying the size of the text and let's make it to work and you'll realize what I'm telling you let's give the line height exactly equal to your height so now let's reload this and what happens is this text right here gets perfectly centered across the square and why does that happen because width and height are similar and we are giving line height as 100 pixels then what happens is this text starts from here and the height of all this text is all the way down to this height and by default texts are automatically vertically aligned as center so this would align the your text in the very center and the next thing we have got is a font weight property and font weight would technically specify that your font should be bold or your font should be normal or your font should or your font should be bolder though, uh, though we don't need this bolder very much but still it's good to know so font weight bold would actually work like the b tag in your html so now you know how to replace b tag with css so we use make use of font weight bold and let's reload this and we have got the text as bolded now the next thing we have is the font family now font family would actually allow you to specify any font on your web page which is either located inside your computer or on somewhere on the web so 
in this tutorial we'll be looking at only the fonts inside my computer because it would take I guess a tutorial more for understanding how to link fonts on the web so now let's specify a font and mm, I guess I should go with Calibri now Calibri is a pre-installed font in MS Word so it should be available in my computer so play co close attention to pay close attention to this font and once I reload the font family or the font should change to Calibri let's reload this and as you can see we have got a change in our font so now instead of the normal I don't know it's like maybe it's Times New Roman or Arial by default in Chrome I don't know you can check that so now from font X which was in Chrome by default we have changed the font to Calibri now let's change the color as well so we have got a nice little square inside of white background with text as well in between it okay so next property I would like to discuss with you and comes to my mind is text shadow now text shadow would pretty much give your text a shadow a drop down shadow which you used to do in Photoshop so no need to create your logos anymore in Photoshop you have your CSS in your hand so let's go ahead and write the basic text shadow uh, I'll explain what I'm doing here so now for now let's reload this and as you can see we have got a nice little black glow in the background and now let's return to code and what's happening here I'll tell you now this zero right here signifies the x-axis of the displacement of the shadow this next zero right here is signifying the y-axis display uh, displacement of the shadow and this value right here 5 pixel is the blur amount of the shadow and this is obviously the color everything separated by a one simple space so now let's give it a value like 10 pixel 0 5 pixel black let's reload this and as you can see our shadow moved a bit let's give it 0 actually so you can actually view what's going on so now we get whoa if you look carefully in the background if you have also got a whoa in the background now this is a shadow the black one is a shadow and since we are using no blur effect on this it appears just like our white text so let's give it a white displacement as well which would be 10 pixel let's reload this now the 0 0 coordinate for this shadow down here is the top more top left uh, corner of this word W the uh, letter W so 10 pixel means move 10 pixels uh, says to the shadow that move 10 pixels to the right of this word which is right here and 10 pixel to the bottom of this word which is right here and since the blur effect is 0 then there's no blur effect and it just appears like the text itself let's give it a blur effect of 1 pixel and let's see what happens let's reload this and as you can see the shadow is kind of blur right now let's make it some more like 5 pixels let's reload and we have got a blurred shadow now and let's change it to 0 and 0 again and let's change it to white now let's reload this and we have got a white glow but black is pretty much more visible so let's use black and we have got a black glow okay so now uh, what should I do yeah so now we have got a square let's learn about border radius in the last tutorial we learned about border which is like border 2 pixels solid black reload we got a 2 pixel black border around it and border radius is kind of special so border radius would actually curve your corners and would make uh, these corners curve now let's see see that in action so uh, I guess I would 
uh, resize this a little bit so it's kind of visible uh, let's resize the font size as well to something like 60 pixels or so let me see if it's even visible yeah it is so we have got this big box and let's make use of the border radius now let's see if I give it uh, 10 pixel though it's a small value but let's start with 10 pixel now play co uh, pay close attention to the borders now right now they are as sharp as a knife but now once we reload this they get curved and the curve is the radius of 10 pixels so mathematically when you complete the circle then the radius of this circle would come to be 10 pixels so that's what border radius is and let's say if I give it a higher value like 100 pixels let's reload this and we have got this uh, kind of appearance like here now let's say if you uh, go really crazy and give it a lot of large value and let's reload this now finally it would stop after becoming a circle because you cannot actually turn a circle more to become a circle so the main aim was of border radius was to curve the corners and when you technically curve the corners 100% to form a circle then you cannot apply any more border radius to it so basically if you do like anything like that then this uh, basically doesn't mean anything to your browser so it will actually stop once it re uh, receives the 50% radius and you could also specify border radius with the help of CSS so let's say if I specify 1% border radius now let's reload this and as you can see we got the radius as 1% of this length as the circle now let's give it 10% and let's reload and we have got a 10% radius and let's give it 50% now now 50% would actually form a circle as you see on even on 49% we have not got a fully formed circle but though it looks like a circle but it's still straight as some edges but on 50% this technically means a complete circle now if you go any larger than 50% then this means no value to this so it would just act like it was stopped at 50% so uh, let me gather my thoughts again what to go with next uh, okay so the last thing we would be looking at this uh, lesson would be cursor now you see that I take over my cursor to sublime it becomes a eye shaped cursor I take over my cursor to the browser it becomes this arrow I take over my cursor to this whoa text it becomes a eye shaped again so let's say I want to uh, get a hand when my mouse is over this so what I'll do is I'll type cursor as a property and I'll write pointer now cursor pointer stands for when the cursor is over this div then this cursor should not be uh, like a default cursor but should act like a pointer so when I reload this and when I hover over this div which is a circle then I get a pointer now notice that even on the close attempt of this div I'm not getting pointer but once I am on this div I get the pointer so that's about cursor and we have got a couple of more values for this cursor pointer and if you want to let's see what they are and just like we have pointer for the cursor we have a value called move now this move let's see what it does let's reload the document and when we reload now move would actually change your cursor to something like something you can track but it won't move obviously because we don't have the functionality ready for it so basically with CSS you can change the cursor to move uh, then we have I guess cross here yeah so we have cross here which would kind of create a plus on your div as you can see which kind of 
acts like if you are cropping an image to select a portion of image or anything so cross here would create a plus sign the help the help cursor would create a cursor with a question mark I guess yeah so help would be uh, basically your choice for abbreviations when you're doing abbreviations on sites on abbreviations and then we have mm, not allowed so not allowed would give you a restricted cursor and we would get this cursor if you see this red with a not allowed sign which says that do not click over here or do not do anything to this area this is not allowed and we have got progress as the value so these are some of the values I remember and there are many other you can use so we have got a progress right here um, and we also got yeah so we also got a weight one so weight just like progress uh, running circle would appear but only the circle one so this kind of happens when your computer gets hanged so that's all for this and oh yeah so actually you could you also use none for your cursor so your cursor becomes kinda invisible when you're hovering over the element now my cursor is uh, invisible when I hover over this element because I have specified cursor to be none so my cursor is right here between A and H so once I am out of this my cursor appears again and you could actually give your cursor your own your own image if you wish to for example let's use this as the cursor image and it looks like a dumb idea but never mind and just like the background one you specify cursor URL image.png let's save and let's reload and okay so let me see cursor URL I guess and now my guess is that this image is too big to be a cursor now let's uh, Google for some small image and I'll find one and would go uh, get back to you let's see images let's get a small one for us and why not resize this a little bit icon and guess what this would be fine I guess yeah so let's download this one let's save this as HTML and CSS cursor.png and here we go now let's use cursor.png as cursor and whoa URL cursor.png and we've got the cursor.png so why the heck is not it working mm. I give it to auto let's reload this okay so basically you have to give it a fallback if the URL is not available so there are some kinds of restrictions so to summarize this cursor thing up so to give a cursor your own custom URL first of all you have to follow some dimensions you could not have a big a jumbo jet like cursor for your website then secondly you have to specify a fallback now this means that when the cursor is not available this URL is not available then use the auto cursor which is the default cursor automatically and you could also use like cross here here cross here and let's reload this and this works because we have this URL image available but if I rename it to something which is not let's reload and we get the default cursor fallback as cross here so that's pretty much how you give cursor a URL any image would go make sure they are of perfect dimensions not basically perfect but smaller dimension not very large and that's all about this part of CSS properties and we'll be learning a lot more CSS properties as we progress towards the end of this series. So that's all for this tutorial. Stay tuned with me and don't forget to subscribe.